Understanding the Library of Congress Classification System. When you visit an academic library in a university or college, you will notice that the books on the shelves feature spine labels with a series of letters and numbers. This alphanumeric sequence is the Library of Congress classification system. Here at the University of Winnipeg Library, as you will see on this map, this sequence runs from the upper right of the map down to the lower left. But what is the Library of Congress classification system and how can it help you become a more effective researcher? First, some background. It was developed to physically organize the books at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. The first edition was published in 1904, and since then it has been widely adopted in academic libraries around the world. But this is a very important point. It organizes books by discipline rather than by subject. And the numbers are related to, but distinct from, Library of Congress subject headings. So when we find a book in the library catalog, we will see that there are subject headings assigned to it, and then the Library of Congress classification number. Now, two books may have exactly the same subject headings assigned to them, but they may be located in very different parts of the library. The reason for this is, as we see with this outline of the Library of Congress scheme, is that it's organized by discipline or the aspect of the topic, whether it's psychology, sociology, the sciences, uh, education, law, etc. This means that some interdisciplinary topics may require browsing in several or many locations in the library. To demonstrate, let us look at the topic of sustainable cities. We're going to look at books from the library catalog. We're going to identify their Library of Congress call numbers and the disciplines represented by those call numbers. So here we go. Near the beginning, with the B's in psychology, is where we find books about the psychology of human environment interactions. So how do we encourage more sustainable behavior to recycle, to compost, to ride your bicycle to work? These are psychological issues. D in history is where we will find the history of individual cities. So how did a particular city, like in this case London, deal with issues of sustainability, energy, public health in the past? E in the history of the Americas. Indigenous peoples of North America by tribe at E99 is where we would find a book about indigenous communities like Cahokia which was a city that held between 10,000 and 20,000 people. How did issues of sustainability affect this city? G in anthropology is where we would find books on indigenous environmental knowledge globally and what sustainable cities might learn from those uh, knowledges. H's in the social sciences is where we will find the majority of the books about city life. So here at HT243, the effects of city life, taking sustainable cities seriously, and then another book at the H's uh, related to transportation from a social science perspective. There are many more that we could demonstrate in the H's. J in political science is where we will find books on political science theory, because at their heart, the debates over sustainable cities relate to classical political philosophy, such as individual liberty and the role of government in the economy. So the decision to drive less, for example, is uh, related to individual liberty, but it affects collective well-being. K in law is where we will find books on zoning. Zoning laws have a huge effect on sustainability. If all housing is located in one place and all businesses are zoned in another, that requires more transportation. L in education, we find uh, material on how sustainability is taught. N in the fine arts is where we find books on domestic architecture and neighborhood design, both very closely related to sustainable cities. P 
Languages and literature is where we find books on journalism and mass media. How are civic issues discussed in media? Uh, and this book here, Civic Media, would get into that. Q, the sciences, is where we find books on climate change and cities. So the science of climate change and how that has an effect on human settlements. R, in medicine, public and environmental health, here is a book on healthy cities. S, in agriculture, books on urban agriculture, urban farming, and here's one on continuous productive urban landscapes. T, in technology, books on energy conservation and alternative energy technologies and their relationship with sustainable cities. And finally, even in the Zeds, in library science, we find a book on public libraries and sustainable communities. So we can see that understanding how to use the Library of Congress classification system is essential when seeking print books in the library. It doesn't really affect ebooks, of course. Ebooks are simply made available through the library catalog. Some topics can be very interdisciplinary, and so all relevant books will often not be located in a single Library of Congress location. But understanding how the LC classification system works can help you identify many different aspects of a topic, some of which may interest you more than others, and can encourage you to expand the scope of your search into scholarly journals representing a wide variety of disciplines. If you would like further assistance with your research at the University of Winnipeg Library, you can make an appointment with one of our subject librarians. Thank you. We hope this video has been useful for you.